Scientology is one of the more extreme dangerous cults in America. They're up there beyond, I would say, the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons and other cults like it, where they excommunicate their members and you're not to associate yourself with them. In Scientology, they call this person a suppressive person. Ladies and gentlemen, Karen de la Carriere is going to tell us not only about the suppressive person doctrine that they teach within the Church of Scientology, but how this doctrine had influenced and affected the death of her son in this cult. We are Myth Vision. Welcome back to Myth Vision Podcast. We have Karen De La Carriere joining us today here at Myth Vision. Did I say that with flair, enough flair? Yes, you did. You did. You know, your name is Karen, not someone that the Scientologist would like to call you, which is a suppressive person. That's not your name. But I, I figure I'd let everybody know, you know, they, they, they bait and switch you pretty good. You know, you can come in with all your baggage, you know, come as you are, as they say, and then you better not leave. Uh, if you do, it's like blood in, blood out. You know, it's like a gang. Once you leave, you're vilified. So when a Scientologist disobeys the rules and regulation of that cult, which, goodness gracious, I mean, we've got big celebrities still part of this thing, or departs from the group without permission, they're declared the, the wor to the world a suppressive person. This means they're antisocial personality, which is defined in the cult as a malicious, evil, wicked human being whose <laughs> actions are destructive. Speaking out in any way to expose the cult on media forum or the internet immediately makes one suppressive. I'm not even a Scientology person, but I suspect I'm suppressive. So I'm <laughs> joining the club, but please tell us what this is all about. I'm interested in learning more. You know, Derek, in the normal laws of the land, for you to be convicted as a criminal or even charged, you have to do malfeasance. You have to do grand theft and larceny, assault and battery, plan a murder. I mean, you have to really show, there has to be evidence that you're harmful. Scientology by propaganda redefinition of words. If you just ask to leave, or if you just escape, you are now a suppressive You haven't done it, you haven't harmed, you haven't done anything. You haven't, you haven't stolen, you haven't had sexual intercourse with somebody else's husband, nothing. All you did was leave the church and Hubbard made an order, anybody, who departs without permission and rigmarole is automatically declared a suppressive person. Mm. So now Scientology, but their propaganda changes the definition of a criminal and makes you a criminal for asking to leave or leaving. And especially if you speak out, if you go to any kind of form. I've known people who got declared suppressive person because they gave likes on Facebook to a, to a forum which exposed, I mean, just gave a like to a post that was critical. Oh, so, That's so I, how far they go. I must ask you. you declared suppressive person for giving a like. To That's someone crazy. Scientology deems is uh, exposing them or giving a negative crit. So all negative criticism is given a sledgehammer because, Derek, it's not just the label. It's what the label means. Your cut, no family member can talk to you. Your own kids can't talk to you. Your spouse can't. You're ordered to move out of the 
home of your spouse. You can't live with a suppressed suppressive person is is actually a slur, like the N word, or calling you a leper. You're you're or calling you um, a pariah, which is a diseased dog. Um, it's the Scientology community now. What about <laughs> does the Calvin Baptist thing have anything like that? Um, yeah. So, so like, what is my background? The religious background. I was a Reformed Presbyterian. Um, when I left, I chose not to come back, but I was a member. So after a while, you get this letter in the mail, and it's not on the level. Scientology can't be compared to in the cult. <laughs> the, I like to call it the cult, but the, the religious background that I come from. But they did excommunicate me mm. uh, from the church, mm. which is not a good sign. I don't care who you are. That, that's not a good sign. So they, they excommunicated me because I d decided I was going to stop attending and stop being participant in this church. Other churches don't do that. Usually they're like, you could come and go. And like, if you want to become a member, you can, but it's not as strict. This is an old school Presbyterian reform church. And, um, they're like kind of descendants, so to speak of the Puritans. Mm -hmm. so I don't know if you know anything about the Puritans and a little bit. Like that. but they're like, you, you only could sing the songs that are in the hymn books that they have already. <laughs> and they're all in like the art thou like, it's all like really old school stuff. And that's tradition. But uh, I had, I had enough. Now I was going to ask you that term suppressive person. I wonder if he really wanted to say something else, you know, like the, let's curse him with this word. What does that word mean? Exactly. I mean, it's obvious you're not supposed to communicate with these people, cut these people off if you're a Scientologist. But what does that mean? Because I heard they try to downplay it. They try to pretend like, oh, no, we don't have suppressive persons or or they try to pretend like we don't treat people like that when they leave. But that's not true. Derek, even though Hubbard said only two and a half percent of the entire population are suppressives, the, the definition of suppressive means you are evil. Your soul and heart is an evil, despicable human being. You are not a normal run-of-the-mill Tom, Dick, and Harry. You have evil purposes. And I think you and I mentioned in an earlier video, Scientology quacks. Man is basically good. Yeah. <laughs> but in the long run, <laughs> at least, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Derek, at least 80% of people who join Scientology end up leaving, departing, getting declared suppressive person. <laughs> So the end, the end game of your history in Scientology is you are announced to the world that you were evil. And yet they claim they have the technology to handle anything, but apparently they don't have the te technology to detect you. I mean, we're talking about people who served 20 years, 30 years, Look at Mike Grindel, 37 years or something like that. They didn't know he was suppressive. They made him the spokesman of the cult of Scientology for 20 years. Great. And they didn't Great. even know he was suppressive. But overnight, as soon as he fled, it's an overnight deduction and evaluation uh, suppressive person. So it's a political weapon or tool it's a it's a slur, but it really, really I lost my child, had only one child. Do you know we had to petition and beg with beggar bowls to have one more child? Such is the control of the cult. I was married to the international president of Church of Scientology International, and we had to submit petitions begging to have one more child. I must have sensed that one child, anything can happen. We begged permission 
of David, of the hierarchy and the dictator, and it was denied. We were, we were refused. So I had only wow. one child, and then he died at 27. And he died because I was labeled a suppressive person. Can I explain why? Please, yeah, I'm interested in this, yes. He had walking pneumonia. He had, he had the, the, the coroner and the autopsy said a $20, the coroner told Jeffrey and me, a $20 antibiotic could have handled his pneumonia. But he didn't have any right medical diagnosis. Now, I'm pretty affluent, and I would have given him the best of medicine. I would have, but he was not allowed to speak to me or talk to me or connect with me because I was suppressive. I was this leper, this N-word. I was to be shunned because I was evil, because I was speaking out and revealing cult secrets. So instead of, he didn't take an antibiotic, but he took, took painkillers. Mm -hmm. What is that drug you might know? Methadone. It's methadone. Yeah. He wasn't a methadone junkie. He actually got prescriptions. He got yeah. prescription from, and anyway, he, he died at 27 years old. And you know, it's hard for me to forgive myself because I had a baby in the cult. I raised him in the cult. His father was imprisoned in the dungeon. They had this horror division in church Scientology called SP Hole, a hole like you go down a well. An SP Hole. <laughs> mm. All the top executives of the cult, the hierarchy. The ones with the biggest titles, they've all been thrown into this hole and labeled SP. They even cannibalize their own. They, does, does Calvin Bapt, do they ever turn on their own like that? Um, I don't know. Usually they don't. What ends up happening is there's such an environment where typically either abuse like the 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 leader the church leader might take advantage of money or um what happened one time at a church i went to this isn't just that but this is different churches i've gone to uh, where the pastor was actually taking advantage of uh, one of the girls in the audience and so his wife found out he was cheating with a girl that he you know that attended their church was a member of their church and kind of took it took advantage of but i've never heard anything like scientology in comparison i mean i've heard some now there's some abuse there's been some pedophiles and other churches and things yeah. but i'm saying the way that these people roll is just i can't believe it exists. It's the only, now in this hole where he bought my president of church center was in for eight years they they scream at each other they're encouraged to do cult kind of all pick on one person and say, confess your crimes, confess. And they actually beat and slap so you get a mob of about 20, 30 people attacking one person in the hole. It's, it's a bloodbath and it, it's, it's sort of ritualistic. It's, it's actually incredible. But I want to ask you a question. You said you received the excommunication letter. Right. Did the Calvin Baptist Church take it as far as then order all other people in that congregation to sever all ties with you? Because that's what Scientology... It wasn't that... It, it's not that, like, the way Scientology does it. But yes, in a sense, the filling is kind of there in the air, but they're not, like, commanding that, you know, like they do with the Scientology. I have a brother who still goes to the church I was excommunicated from, oh. but he still hangs out with me and talks to me. Mm. Um, the difference is I think I could walk back in to the church and possibly, I don't know, there's probably some rules I'd have to go through to try and be a member again. Not mm. interested in doing that. But anyway, it's like, 
you know, he, he hangs out with me and he's like, I don't care what they say. If they did, I'm, I'm your brother. And like, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. So, you know, well, the but, difference, <laughs> yeah. huge difference, you can walk back in. If you try to walk back in Scientology after declare, you have security guards on bicycles circling and peddling. You get a citizen's arrest. Huh. They would handcuff you and call the local police department. You are so, you cannot set foot on their property after an SB declare. That's why they just surround themselves with, it's a fortress. It's a fortress surrounded with security guards. Wow. And if there's one word to describe Scientology, it's paranoia. They're paranoid that you're evil and you're going to destroy them. And, and so they resist it so much that they have a hundred people making videos, which actually could go towards bringing them down, but that they resist it so much. <laughs> they absolutely believe that you are going to harm and destroy them. So question about the suppressives, this couple things. Um, what do they think happens to a suppressive person who has been kicked out of the truth of Scientology? Like, for example, a Christian who leaves the faith and once knew the truth and left, their punishment in hell is worse, for example. But uh, in Scientology, I kind of wonder, like, how do they expect karma, if you will, if I could use the term, to catch up to the suppressive person? Hmm. Well, in Scientology, you are convinced, you, you do believe you are an eternal spirit. And why, I'm not sure if I'm answering this really exactly the way you want it so you can ask the question again if i'm diverting off okay. your question but here's the thing the way they keep people in line and the way that people don't leave faster than they do is they convince you if you leave you will just go through darkness eternal black they don't they don't push fire burning in hellfire but it's a kind of hell because you are a lost soul and you're going to <laughs> here's the science fiction you're going to end up in these implant stations implant stations are very cunning factories where they zoom your brain with electronics and give you commands. Let me explain. Let me just explain an implant. There was a famous movie called The Manchurian Candidate. And the Manchurian Candidate got an implant to kill. He had to kill the president or whatever. An implant is a command absolutely entrenched into you that when you wake up and come out of the implant, you go do it. So it's not really your will, you were implanted to do it. I mean, my God, my little son, Alexander, at 12 years old, he was worried that there were implant stations on Mars ready to zap you as soon as you died and give you all these fake commands. And I said, Alexander, have you been to the NASA site? There's no stations there. And who, what benefit is it for any spirit who no longer has a body to flit around in the atmosphere creating implant stations? But I will tell you, Derek, this is a very, very seriously believed concept with Scientologists. Wow. You ask any Scientologist. Scientologists believe that they did a bad thing because psychiatrists implanted them five million years ago, five billion years ago. The reason that they are 
too fat, that they're eating too much, is an implant. The implant gets the Scientologist off the hook because, after all, psychiatrists implanted it. This is all part of the ideology. This is very, very... The implant isn't some thing that comes up once in a while. Scientologists believe only their technology can undo these implants you've been zapped with in the mind. Okay, one question. I answer your question. No, that was actually – you answered the question in many ways based off of Scientology. So that – I appreciate it. Let me ask you this. Have you ever heard in the history, and you've been there for a long time, have you ever heard of someone declared suppressive that, if I could use the term, repents with sincereness and the church goes, okay, we'll, we'll lift the suppressive label because they've got a lot of money or whatever it might be. And they said, oh, you know what? We were mistaken about labeling them suppressive. They're back. They've, they've, they realize the truth or something like that. You know, in my 40 years in the cult, I could count on my fingers how many times that happened. What they do is you can't, they, you can't revert an SP declare. That's not. What you have to do is a formula of steps called A to E, A, B, C, D, E. And A, I believe, is sit down and write up every crime you've ever done against Scientology, against your mom, and just spend days, weeks, months flushing up. They're going to use this. They're going to use your confession. And you put it in your, you type it up. B, money. How much you're going to get as a man? Huge money. Pay for this, pay for that. I might be getting this slightly wrong. That might be C. C is train. Give them more money and do a huge amount of trick. So you have to go through A to E. But the trickery and treachery of the cult is, I've known people that they said, okay, do your A to E and we'll review your SP declare. After they've done it all and submitted it, they get a new declare. Oh, they get a brand new declare. Now they've given the cult to every transgression they've ever done, and they take some of the choice tidbits out of your confession. You've done A to E, you've given them money, you've done court, and then they redeclare you. That's a trick. So that really got around on the internet in Scientology communities. You're a fool to do A to E. They're going to redeclare you. They'll get it. <laughs> Absolute treachery. Treachery. Oh, my goodness. So, so the difference between you is you could walk back in. You won't have security handcuff you or, 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 or block you from. You can walk right back in even though they excommunicated you. Whoa, you can't do that in a Scientology cult. That's why there's security, the entrance... They even have plain clothes security that look like civilians at celebrity center sitting in the lobby. You'll see a couple of people sitting around and they are security. So the word paranoia, Hubbard was got more and more paranoid, especially in his later years. But that paranoia, paranoia floods the cult because every Scientologist is thinking, you know, I'm going to be your friend, but if you say anything negative, I'll be snitching on you. I don't know if you're really with the program. The whole thing is dog eat dog, dog report dog, snitch report. <sighs> Well, I could tell you one thing before I let you go, because this this whole cult is horrible. There is a doctrine within the teaching of Calvinism, which I came out of, and th they have five uh, acronyms for the flower tulip, 
T-U-L-I-P. And one of the things that they do is they say, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but T is total depravity. So you're a wicked human. You were born Ish. this way. Ish. All right. U is unconditional election. Before you did anything good or bad, God chose to either save you or you were always going to be one of the ones he's going to end up destroying. L is limited atonement. atonement. Jesus only died for the elect, for those people that he chose to save. Everyone's bad, everyone's wicked, but he chose to save only some. Mm -hmm. I, irresistible grace, which means whoever he went to save, no matter what, it was predestined, he will save them. And then P, perseverance of the saints. And this is where the kicker is. If you don't stay in this movement, whatever the Christianity is, if you don't stay showing faithfulness till you die, you mm. were never really one of us. So technically, it's like your suppressive person uh, ideology or this, this derogatory thing. And what they do is they'll say things like, meet to me, you were never really a believer. God never chose you. Mm. Why? Because you didn't stay in this. And because you didn't stay, that is the evidence that we know you were never really one of us. Now, in your, your situation, because uh, Mike Rinder left after 37 years, the whole time he was technically a suppressive person. But even he nor anyone really knew that. For me, they'll say, you thought you were believed. You thought you had God's spirit inside you. You thought you were saved. But nice try because you didn't stay. And mm -hmm. unless you serve to the end, if there's, a, there's a scripture they use, and it says, he who endures to the end shall be saved. And that's how they look at it. So I just figure I'd piece that in because really the suppressive stuff is very relatable. Derek, your whole breakdown of Tulip, that was badass. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> in an admiration way. You gave a very good, that was good. That was, that was badass. <laughs> thank you. Well, I can't thank you enough, honestly, for the service that you do. I mean, I know you've gone through so much over the years of hate from this group. And all we can do is continue to try and educate and help show love to people out there and say, listen, if you're looking for purpose in life and you want to find your way, you want to find out that happy point where you're actually not, you know, miserable or depressed. You don't need to get involved in these type of things. There are plenty of different things out there, philosophies and groups, even religions, if that is your choice. But my point is you don't need to go in that direction. We're trying to steer you towards better ways of going about it. I have friends that believe I have friends that don't believe, but guess what? They're all happy. They figured out what works for them and they're not forced to do what they want. They don't feel fear that causes them to do it. It's either a social thing, a cultural thing. They like the group setting, the friendly family feeling that they get from people. All of that is found in Scientology too. Don't get me wrong, but there's so much harm that you're describing. We're trying to say, pick a different brand, go somewhere different. Trust us. Well spoken. Well spoken. Okay, so we're making these a little shorter and snappy. I want to make a little plug. This kind of channel is done where the editing, the filming, the, everything Derek pours into it to educate is done on a volunteer. There's no paycheck. There's no weekly paycheck. So please, firstly, join us. We want you on this channel. We want you as an audience. Leave a comment, participate, join in, be part of our forum. We want that. Join the forum. If you can just leave a donation of any kind, click, click the button, send Derek a little donation for his shows, and we want to see you again in due course. Be safe, be well. And don't get lured into any kind of cult. <laughs> well, look, Karen, I appreciate the plug. I really thank you for the love. And if you, 
obviously, if you're able to help, help. If you can't, we understand. There's ways to help that you don't have to pay any money. You can like it. You can share it. You can comment. It just helps the algorithm. Go check yes. out Karen's YouTube channel as well. We're working together now. We're teaming up to try and obviously take down horrible ideas that are still out there in the free country that we live in. And uh, we're at the very least, what we're trying to do is hopefully educate enough people to make a change happen in the cult. Whether the well, we'd love to see the cult disappear, but whether it ever does or doesn't, the harmful practices built into it must be removed. And I just don't see that happening with this kind of cult. So I see this cult's going to have to collapse. I just don't think they're willing to reform. I don't think they're willing to go against L. Ron Hubbard's words. And if that's the case, they can't redefine his words to mean something less violent, less um, abusive. Yeah. Then, then redefine it at least. Change what you think it means, at least, even if that's not what it means, because what it's doing is unbelievable. And I'm sorry about your, your son. And if he was alive today, we'd have a lot in common because I'm a recovering drug addict myself and has struggled with addiction. Mm -hmm. And I would spend time with him and talk to him and even interview him if he ever made it out. But uh, I want everyone to be warned not to go into this. Karen, thank you so much once again. Love you. Love you too, Derek. Thank Take you. care, everybody. Please, please stay with us now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.